The Pacific hurricane season has been very active this year, bringing more damage than what we've actually seen on the Atlantic side this year. So we do want to bring in AccuWeather Senior Director of Forecasting Operations, Dan, Dan DePodwin. Uh, and Dan, uh, it's been an interesting year. We got into an El Nino this year for the first time uh, in three plus years. Uh, but uh, tell us about the climatology of uh, East Pacific storms. Where do they typically travel? Yeah, that's right, Jeff. Really. This year was a little bit different with the El Nino year, but in general we see, and this is over the last 30 years, but it's pretty representative of all storms in the Eastern Pacific Basin. They travel typically from east to west, move out into the open uh, waters of the Pacific, and most of them, the vast majority in fact, do not make landfall. And the ones that do typically impact the coast of Mexico. And a lot of this area though is very, um, it's, it's, it's either lightly populated or not densely populated, which is very different than what we see in the Atlantic, where a lot of the coastline, especially it, along the U.S. coast, is very densely populated, which is very different than what we see in Mexico and, and uh, Baja, California. And that's often uh, one of the big factors that, that often makes East Pacific storms a little less newsworthy. They don't get quite the same attention, uh, at least in the U.S., compared to Atlantic storms, which are uh, closing in on the U.S. as opposed to typically moving away. But when we look at this year, specifically 2023, there's been a disproportionate number of storms into Mexico, and that's been a big problem. Yeah, we just saw some footage of some of the storms from this year. We've had several different events, um, and in, in fact, two of them, Otis, and Hillary, which made uh, news in, in the U.S., are going to go down as uh, some of the top or the most costly, costliest uh, storms to ever uh, impact areas in the uh, Pacific Basin, which is pretty unusual to have one in one season, let alone two in the same season. So both Otis and Hillary were unusual for their impact in Otis because of where it made landfall near Acapulco. If it had made landfall in another part of the Mexican coastline, the damage would have been significantly uh, less. And with Otis, we saw uh, a record broken for the East Pacific in terms of uh, most significant increase in wind speed in just a 12 hour period. Patricia from uh, 2015 used to hold that record, but this thing strengthened by uh, by 80 miles per hour uh, in one 12 hour time period. Uh, so what were some of the influences in that rapid increase in intensity? So certainly El Nino years, we, in El Nino years, we, we always have to be concerned about the rapid intensification because the waters in the Pacific are warmer than average. Uh, and that was certainly the case with Otis, light wind shear, and it just really ramped up very quickly. Sometimes we see these storms uh, do that. Unfortunately, with Otis, it happened right before landfall. Patricia's case from 2015, it occurred before landfall and had started to ramp down before it uh, did impact the coast. Yeah, this was a wild one from 65 miles per hour to 145 miles per hour from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and uh, again, it happened at, at the wrong time here as it was a closing in on landfall. Dan DePodwin, a longtime meteorologist here at AccuWeather and uh, Director of Forecasting Operations. Thanks again, Dan. Thanks, Jeff. All right.